Hey guys, <coughs> I'm going to do um, some overclocking with uh, the new X Gigabyte X79 uh, UD7 motherboard. Um, so I've just entered the BIOS, you know, hit the lead key when it starts up basically. And uh, we've got the, <coughs> it starts up with the 3D BIOS. I usually just hit escape on the keyboard and uh, go to the <coughs> and go to the advanced uh, BIOS. But you know, if you want to go back to 3D BIOS, just click on the 3D icon, and you can hover on an area, 3D power, whatever system tuning, and you'll get all the all the similar parameters as well. So you can just, uh, for example, enable XMP profile, do some memory tuning, voltage, and whatnot. Um, but uh, I'm not, uh, I prefer the advanced version. Anyway, so I'm using a Corsair socket 1366 air cooler. Um, it, it fits on it, so it's a pretty warm day in Sydney. As you can see, it's idling at 40 degrees, and my ambient's probably, I don't know, 25 or higher. Okay, so I'll just walk you through different bio settings. So, um, when overclocking, I usually just um, yeah, whatever, so just select uh, manual and select ratio. Let's see, we want 4.4, .4, right? Select 44 multi, go into advanced settings. Uh, I leave all these uh, uh, as they are. You're going to need the real time CPU ratio control enabled uh, for the OC buttons on the board to actually work properly. Uh, turbo, leave the turbo on or auto. Uh, you're going to need it in this particular setup. Now, some motherboards, uh, or some BIOSes at least, or UD5, these are very early BIOSes. So There'll still be quite a few things that that'll get um, you know sorted out. But some BIOS files, uh, for example, need the C1E uh, auto enabled to be able to change uh, ratio. But this particular one doesn't. So we'll just disable all those settings. Don't need any of them. Disable, disable, disable. Uh, I've got some Corsair memory, so we'll just enable the. XMP and run it at 2133. If you run it at 1866, for example, which is uh, sufficient enough, I've done some testing and there's really not a lot of difference between 1866, 2133, even 2400 uh, memory. Uh, if you use 1866, you don't really need to fine tune voltages all that much, you know. Well, I guess it'll depend on the memory modules as well, but uh, you, you know, you shouldn't really need to. Um, timings, if you have an XMP, it will set them uh, on its own. Now, these are default timings, but with 1866, it will actually tighten them. They're not going to be 9, 11, 10, they'll be tighter. So we'll see what they are. We'll check in Windows when we go in there. You have to. Um, 3D power options, I usually just leave it all in order. It, it will actually control the PWM frequency automatically and um, it will have some form of load line enabled as it is. So just leave it as it is. If, you know, if it doesn't work out for you, then you can maybe try and fine tune it. I haven't really done any overclocking, uh, so we'll find out what it needs. Early biases again. Um, when you press new key in values, uh, first time it, um, there's a bit of a delay on it or whatever, but uh, half, afterwards it's fine. You don't need, like you could set 1.1 here if it's not stable or 1.15 and just see what your uh, CPU likes. I'll just leave it at auto. And then you can sort of fine tune it later. IMC also, sometimes it benefits going to say 1.1 or 1.2. It really depends on the memory kit. With, with 1866, let's leave it in order. 
I'm using a lot of vCore. You probably won't need that that much, but like we could probably drop it later, and we, we actually might need to. I, I might just drop it a little. Uh, it is a quite a hot day here, so might affect stability and memory. I'll just leave 165 because this memory is rated 165. Don't touch anything else. Leave it at auto. I'm not going to mess around with all this stuff. These are just temperatures you're getting. Um, <coughs> uh, right now it's stock settings. I'll obviously increase. I just disable all these options that are, you know, for overclocking wise. You, you could use them if you need them, if you don't. Check what slot you are booting from first. Just not PCI one. I just disable all that. Leave it all loaded now, whatever it is. You can save profiles, so you can just hit save and say go profile 3 or whatever. That will probably get changed a little bit more. Introduce some of the older functions that we've had before. Um, and yeah, save and exit. So let's see how overclock worked. This is not a fresh install of OS, I just used an old version. So it's probably got a bunch of other older drivers on it while it's loading up. Okay. Zoom in. Okay. I've got a 3930K here, and uh, we've set 4.4 or 44 multi, and uh, that's the motherboard, F3, F BIOS. BIOSes are coming thick and fast, it just got released yesterday, so there will be a lot of updates to fix some niggling issues, I'm sure people will have some issues here and there. Uh, as you can see, the timings have been tightened because XMP profile has a bunch of different um, scenarios depending on the frequency that you're selecting. So in this instance, you're getting 99824, uh, 16 gig of RAM. I'm using uh, Corsair GTX 7s, uh, just a GTX 470 graphics card. I was also saying if you don't mess around with the PWM frequency and low line and all that sort of stuff, just leave it at auto, you're going to get some. So at, at idle you're getting 1.5 and at load it increased to 1.52. See how it drops to 1.5? And then, so it, it's basically automatically compensating for some of the load. So it just slightly bumps up. So you don't really need to mess around with that. Just leave it as is.
See where the benchmark stopped, they're getting 1.5. CPZ is reading a bit lower than it should, it's reading 1.46. I'll also show you um, 2133 settings. So basically, just flick to 2133 there, and then in voltage, I had a bit of a play with this before, and I found that I'd have to like bump the V. Sorry, I'd have to like bump the VTT to. Um, I think it's uh, 1.15 or something, so we'll just put that. And uh, IMC to 1.1, I like it. Alright, so we'll just zoom in. <coughs> okay, so we're still at 4.4. Same bias, 87. Now it's 1066. And it's 91927. Nine, so it just loosened up. It was 998, 20 something before. So it's uh, loosened up timings. Same memory. What's up? Don't know what he's. I was saying before during the, the 3D mark run, it basically stays at like you know single threaded or low load situation. It's at 1.5. Uh, yeah, CPZ is reading 1.46. It's reading a bit low. Guys, I'm gonna um, just. Uh, run you quickly through what, what you need to do to set up to be able to use the OC touch feature so those uh, so these particular buttons on the UD7 motherboard, the overclocking edition um, what frequencies you can you can tune and what you need to set in BIOS to be able to do that so just hit escape uh, go to advanced frequency and uh, here so CP core features, what you need to basically have uh, enabled is this uh, real-time CPU ratio control in OS. So just leave that enabled. Okay, we'll get out of the BIOS, save exit, got to read those. Flicking through the OC buttons, um, you can do it really quickly now, it's instantaneous. Uh, you know, our previous board, X58 uh, OC, uh, was a little um, uh, more touchy feely with these buttons where you know, sometimes the multiplier when you're pushing up or down too quickly, it'll it'll change. Um, you know, in 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 increments of, for example, two. So it'll jump from 33 to 35 multi instead of just one. And uh, you had you know you had to you know press it in you know sp you know a longer space of time to be able to register properly. With this one, you you can just go. You know, we're at 3.7 gig now. So one, two, three, four. It's basically as quick as um, you know the CPZ can um, update update the actual. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. There you go. It's like instant. Second yeah. interesting thing about the OC uh, touch buttons is that it's uh, a hardware change, like I mentioned before, but it does not affect BIOS settings whatsoever. So whatever I do in Windows, like if you're pushing, say, imagine this is. You know, 5.7 gigahertz instead of 4 gigahertz, and uh, you're you know pushing for 5.8, and you know you crash, and next time you reboot, you're not going to be, you know, the BIOS is not going to remember 5.8. It'll still stay at 5.7 or 5.5, whatever you're booting at, right? So basically, if I just go one, two, three, say four, I've dropped 
the uh, uh, CPU multi by four, so it should be 3.6, and we'll we'll engage this gear so we go uh, at one increment. So I'm going to drop this by two. So we're going to have 98 uh, B clock. We're going to have 3.6 gigahertz uh, on the uh, sorry 36 multi on the CPU, right? So 3.5 3 gigahertz. So I'll just uh, go into BIOS and just show you that um, it's actually still staying at 4 gigahertz. Okay, so see the BIOS is actually showing the B clock at 100 and 3.8 but when you go to Windows that's actually 4 gigahertz it's just because the way the turbo works now um, you're uh, essentially at... Um, so I'll just save changes. No, save changes. Yep, we go to Windows we'll just check the frequency so those changes that we made with the OC, um, with the uh, OC, these OC buttons, essentially did nothing to uh, affect the frequencies in in BIOS itself. That's pretty handy when you're benching. So no longer have to worry about you know being being stuck at high frequencies. What I normally like to do when I'm benching is uh, I like to boot up at slightly lower frequency or multi or uh, you know, B clock or whatnot, and then just push it up in Windows. And then if I crash, I'm back at the more stable settings while I'm while I'm booting up in a lower frequency as well. Just you know, once you're starting to push the absolute limit of the of itself. So we just rebooted into Windows now. I'm just waiting for the you know Windows to load up. We'll load up CPZ. And uh, just uh, it should say 4 gigahertz, so 40 times 100 instead of 3527 with a uh, you know 36 multi and uh, 98 uh, megahertz B clock like we uh, said with the OC keys. Yeah, just as I said. There you go. One more thing that I okay. wanted to show you was this um, Wi-Fi adapter, and um, it's got a it's got a good use for. Uh, people that do a lot of benching and overclocking because uh, you can <coughs> a lot of people including myself tend to bench in a dungeon or whatever and unless you've got cabling you know router with all the cabling and stuff you're not going to get uh, internet access if you want to get a validation or whatever so uh, we're basically um, with this um, wireless adapter that we've bundled is able to uh, connect wirelessly to your network, which so uh, I've just uh, showed you there. I've, I've connected to the 802.11n, so run wireless N network. Um, I've just plugged in the top antenna, that that little that little antenna there. Um, so yeah, so basically, you know, validations or whatever perfect for this kind of thing or you know if you want to live stream or whatnot um, I haven't really checked the speed but I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll be okay got cable internet so it should be pretty fast yeah so 20 megabits that's plenty anyway just another handy little feature for uh, uh, for these um, particular boards for, for people benching and I'm sure plenty of other purposes as well. Okay.